Hi, it's Barbara and welcome back to Wikidesign. I have been designing websites for over 20 years now, and throughout my career, I've heard a lot of different myths about web design. I recently came across a website called UX Myths. This website debunks common myths about user experience through articles, research, and statistics. Now, I know that web design and user experience aren't exactly the same thing, but User experience goes into the making of a website, so it's something that you have to take into consideration. There are 34 myths on this website, and I'm not going to cover all of them in this video, but I do encourage you to check out this website because I found it really interesting. They have a lot of information, not just on web design, but on product design and accessibility as well. I'll put a link to it in the description box below so you can check it out. In this video, we're going to focus on five myths that I personally get asked a lot. So without further ado, let's get into it. Myth number one, people don't scroll. For whatever reason, people have this misconception about web design that scrolling is bad. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. Some of the best designed websites have tons of scrolling. I'm even talking about the websites that win tons of awards and are on all those websites you see for web design inspiration. They all scroll. I think that the misconception comes from the print world where there's this thing called above the fold. Back in the day when newspapers were really popular, we would put all the important information above the fold to capture the reader's attention. But the web and print are completely different especially now that mobile devices are so popular. Websites actually encourage you to scroll now. I mean, think about how much time you spent scrolling YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok just today. In a Time Magazine article titled, What You Think You Know About the Web Is Wrong, Chartbeat and data analytics provider found that 66% of information on a normal page was below the fold. Another company, called Clicktail, analyze 100,000 page views. The result? People use the scroll bar on 76% of the pages, with 22% being scrolled all the way down to the bottom, regardless of the length of the page. UX Myths references several other studies that prove that scrolling happens quite a bit. So I think we can successfully debunk this myth. So this means you can stop stressing out about trying to cram everything in that top area of your website. It makes your design look cluttered and it's just overall bad for user experience. Now this isn't to say that the above the fold area isn't important because it definitely is. It's still going to get the most attention out of everything else on the website. But instead of trying to cram as much information as you can into that area, a better option would be to give users a reason to scroll. Make that fold area look super interesting so people will want to scroll and see even more. It's a much better solution. Myth number two, your design has to be original. I think that this is something that both small business owners and designers get wrong. As a small business owner, I get that you want your website to be cool and fun and unique. And having a website is definitely an opportunity for you to stand out amongst your competitors. From a design perspective, I think a lot of us try to reinvent the wheel every time we do a new website because we want that cool piece for our portfolio. But at the end of the day, we need to make sure we're taking user experience into consideration. Sometimes those cool things that we see aren't necessarily practical. Design systems exist for a reason, because they work. We don't want visitors to our website having to try to figure out how to get around because our design is too complicated. Carcinified's Think Vitamin blog points out that the great design solution you seek is probably already out there. Seth Godin advises in his blog post titled, How to Create a Good Enough Website, that there are over a billion sites out there for inspiration. He goes on to say, your car isn't unique and your house might not be either. If you got a site that sells 42 kinds of wrapping paper, why not start by finding a successful website that sells, I don't know, shoes or yo-yos? Something that both appeals to your target audience and has been tested and tweaked and works. Of course, we're not talking about ripping off another company's website design. That's not cool. Please don't do that. But you can definitely look to other sites to get inspiration for your own site. As a designer, 
I'm always looking for inspiration. And not only do I do that, but I reuse certain elements that work often in my designs. If I find a good way to display certain information on a page, why wouldn't I use that over and over again? It works. Using those same elements in my designs allows me to work faster and more efficiently. While the end result might not be a groundbreaking design that we've never seen before, what really matters is that it works for the client's business. Myth number three, you don't need content to design a website. Maybe I should have saved this one for last because this one is my favorite. I love that this is included on the list because content is the most important thing when it comes to a website design. It's the reason people are coming to your website in the first place. You will never have a good website design if you don't focus on content first. Back in the day before Mark and I started Wiki Design, I worked for a lot of different design agencies that did the design first approach. We would design websites using lorem ipsum or dummy filler text. And while the sites we were designing were aesthetically pleasing, they never really worked for our clients. We were trying to force our clients to use this beautiful design that we created for them. And 100% of the time, that design would have to change because the content that they gave us didn't fit in with the design that we created. What we should have been doing and what we now do at Wiki Design is ask for their content first before we ever try to design anything. Doing this gives us the opportunity to really evaluate what they need to have on their website and come up with a really good plan and strategy for the design moving forward. Something that's way more effective than doing the design first approach. UX Myths lists several articles that go into why we need to design around content and not use dummy lorem ipsum text. One point that I really liked was by designer Luke Robolewski. I am so sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. He argues that using dummy content or fake information in the web design process can result in products with unrealistic assumptions, and potentially serious design flaws. I totally agree with this because that's exactly what would happen when I worked for those other companies. The content that our clients gave us, more often than not, didn't fit in with the design that we created for them. We'd either have to change up the design completely or try to force it into the space, which led to really ineffective designs. As a designer, my job isn't just to make something look pretty. It's to use my expertise to help you solve a problem or do something better. If I don't have the content for your website first, then I'm not really doing my job well. Myth number four, success happens overnight. I've definitely run into this one before, and if you're a designer, you probably have too. For whatever reason, people think when they hit publish on their new website that they're going to get a million dollars in sales or thousands of email subscribers or in a lot of cases, first page Google rankings. And while I wish that was the case, it's simply not true. Your website isn't a magic pill that's going to solve all of your marketing problems. It's going to take some time to see results, but I promise you with a solid foundation, you will get there. Wiki Design has been in business since 2014, and I'll be the first to tell you that those first few years were pretty rough. We had to work really hard to get where we are today, and honestly, we didn't see much success in those first few years. UX Myths lists several other companies that went through the exact same thing. Twitter, Google, Amazon. Yes, Amazon. They weren't actually profitable for the first seven years they were running their business. Yes, it's true. The reality is running a business takes a lot of hard work, experimentation, and learning. Simply launching a website isn't going to give you overnight success because overnight success isn't a real thing. You should look at your website as an investment in your business, something that can help you achieve your goals, but those goals are still going to take a lot of time and effort. Myth number five, if it works for Amazon, it will work for you. This is another great myth that I don't think just applies to Amazon, but any other company or business. Just because you like a design or your competitor is doing something on a website doesn't mean that that's necessarily going to work for you. This is something that I've had to remind my clients of pretty often. I'll get sent links to inspiration sites where people will say, 
I really like how they did this slider or I think that this section is really cool. Can we do something like that on my website? Then I'll have to remind them that the content that they sent over doesn't necessarily work for whatever inspiration they liked. Maybe they don't have the images for a cool slider or maybe their content just won't fit in with the section that they really liked on another website. I'm not against having clients send me inspiration. I think that it's a really important part of the process actually. But over the years, we've definitely changed up how we ask for inspiration now. Instead of just asking for links to sites that our clients like, we ask them why they like it and why they think something like that would fit in with their brand. This forces our clients to think deeper about their branding and not just copy off of successful companies. Joshua Porter argues in his article titled Copycat Design that mindlessly copying a design, that of Amazon or Facebook for example, is a horrible idea. When you copy, you don't know the reasons behind the design, you're not responding directly to your customer's needs, and you're devaluing your own data. I couldn't have said it better myself. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up this video. I hope that this gave you some insight into the web design process and debunked any myths that you might have had about web design. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.